Morning all, hope you're doing well, hope you're staying safe. It is Saturday the 1st of August, yep, we're into August already. Some big news today on Universal Orlando, and not great news, but I'm going to get to that in a little while. Starting off with US cases, another 71,000 yesterday. That's up on the last few days, but it is trending down, thankfully. And we're going to see that in Florida as well. US deaths yesterday, almost 1,500. That's the third day in a row, over 1,400, and that's the first time that's happened since May the 15th. Now that's trending up now for over three weeks, but I'm guessing that that's you know, going along with the cases a little bit. Florida cases just over 9,000 yesterday. That's the sixth day in a row under 10,000. And okay, that might not feel like great news if you're just kind of out there looking at it from the outside. When you're here, that's fantastic news. If we can get into the eights, I'll be ecstatic, to be honest with you. If we can get that trend moving down a little bit, then that's, that's what I want. That's what we need. Um, and that trend is moving down. Um, Florida yesterday had though 256 deaths um, and that's record setting for the third or fourth time this week unfortunately. Not looking good but I think that's trending with the cases so our, our caseload kind of I hoped peaked about three weeks ago so hopefully those deaths are now going to come down along with the cases that are coming down too that, that's what I hope anyway. Um, Florida now ranks number two behind Texas in terms of new cases per day yesterday and Orange County ranks number four behind the usual trio of Miami-Dade, Broward and Palm Beach. Stats, the tests and hospitalization numbers haven't been released yesterday, for yesterday and uh, this isn't an early video today, it's quite late in the morning so I'm just wondering why that is, why that, there's a hold up. Um, we're not going to get some test results or we're going to get sporadic test results now I guess because of Hurricane Isaias that's coming to us tomorrow and I'm going to get to that in a minute as well but just be aware that there, there could be um, a bit of a, a lag on results for, for all sorts of stuff because of um, Hurricane Isaias. They are closing some tests, test centres as well because of that so there, there will be less test results coming out through the next few days I guess. Um, Hospitalisations will be a record this week that's for sure. Um, deaths already are and there's still three days to go. That's not great news, but hopefully again, they will start to come down as uh, cases come down. ICU beds, 1,250-ish uh, as of this morning. That's around the same as it was on Thursday. So although hospitalizations are going up and deaths are going up, ICU beds availability still seems to be around the same. The R rate in Florida remains unchanged at 0.99, so we're just under that one, and it's been like that for a little while now. Florida ranks number 18, um, it's down one place which is not great news but as long as we're under one I suppose that's good and heading in the right direction. There are now only 18 states though with uh, an, an R rate under one so we've lost a couple, there were 20 on Thursday so we, you know, those other states kind of need to get their acts together I guess. Um, masks are now mandated in 34 states so that's up another two since Thursday. Florida still isn't one of them. The weather it's going to be 94 degrees Fahrenheit today here, that's 34 degrees centigrade. It is going to cool down tomorrow to 86 and that's because of Hurricane Isaias. So getting into Hurricane Isaias, we're looking at that hitting us tonight in the early hours of tomorrow morning. The wind speed here isn't forecasted to be very big, it's going to be 20 to 30 miles an hour, so that's just like a windy day. On the coast, however, on the east coast and in South Florida, it could be 90 miles an hour plus, so they could see some damage. That is a, that is a category one hurricane. So they could see some damage on the coast there and some storm surge as well. Our rainfall here isn't going to be very significant either, you know, in, in context over the summer. One to two inches in, in uh, inland areas, two to four inches on the coast. So they're going to get more substantial rain than we are. Into uh, Disney, the Disney availability calendar looking really good now for theme park ticket guests, i.e. one day ticket holders and resort guests. Through August it's all clear, um, only on the 6th of September do resort guests have a bit of an issue, only Hollywood Studios isn't available on the 6th, so don't forget that the 7th is Labor Day here, that's a public holiday. For annual pass holders not looking so great, up to August the 19th only um, Epcot is available and then from the 19th up to the end of the month we've got only Hollywood Studios that's unavailable, obviously those dates that are blanked out in grey are completely unavailable, they're booked solid. In September we've got Hollywood Studios sold out for all weekends for annual pass holders. We've got all other parks are available every day. Um, and then October the 3rd and the 10th is the only unavailability for, for Hollywood Studios. Every park is available other than that across uh, October. And then 
Apart from those dates that I've mentioned, everything is available up to September the 26th, 2021 currently. Universal Orlando, so they're part of Comcast. They released their second quarter results on Thursday. Theme park revenue down 94% this quarter, albeit that only no, they only opened in, in early June, so it, it, they're not getting the whole of the revenue for, for the quarter anyway. So I'm expecting third quarter revenue to be up fairly significantly on that, although you, you know, 94% down, you can only not fail to really meet that, that um, goal again, can you? So um, what it means is that they've, they've postponed Epic Universe construction. I guess they want their cash to go in other places. So Epic Universe is postponed indefinitely. They've also been laying off more people this week. Um, on Friday, they announced more layoffs at Universal Studios. They didn't say how many, but that's going probably hand in hand with the closing, um, suspending of six attractions through Universal Studios and Islands of Adventure. I'm going to have the detail of that in the news. Okay, so they are the headlines. Um, if you're new to the channel, please do subscribe, hit the notification bell and press all. You'll get news three times a week and you'll get other stuff in between times. We're going to the parks and we're, we're doing different things. So you will get uh, some park kind of stuff during the, during the meantime when we're not doing news. If you like the video, please do give it a like. The algorithm does like the likes and it'll spread the, the video to other people. If you think the, the video would benefit other people, please do share it as well. Okay, they are the headlines. Let's get to the news. The number of new cases across the whole of the US yesterday was 70,904. That's up on the last few days, but trending down. The number of deaths in the US yesterday was 1,462. That's the third day in a row over 1,400 and the first time since May the 15th that that's happened. That's been trending up now for over three weeks. In Florida, we had 9,007 new cases yesterday. That's the sixth day in a row under 10,000 and it's trending down. 256 deaths were recorded in Florida yesterday. That's a record for deaths and that record has been broken for four days in a row and it's trending up. Florida ranked number two in the nation yesterday for number of cases just behind Texas. In Florida, Orange County ranked number four behind Palm Beach, Broward and Miami-Dade. Looking at stats, tests and hospitalization figures are not available for yesterday yet. It's likely that hospitalizations will be a record this week and deaths already are a record and we have three days still yet to go. As of this morning, there are 1,020 adult ICU beds available in Florida and 229 children's beds for a total of 1,249. That's around the same as it was on Thursday. The effective reproduction rate in Florida remains at 0.99. It's been like that for a little while now. Florida ranks number 19 currently in the US for its R rate. There were 20 states with an R rate under one on Thursday, so two have dropped back into the red. The number of states where masks must be worn in public has risen to 34 from 32 on Tuesday. Florida still isn't one of those states. It's going to be 94 degrees Fahrenheit here in Orlando today. That's 34 degrees centigrade. Tomorrow will only reach 86 degrees Fahrenheit and that's because of Hurricane Isaias. Hurricane Isaias should reach central Florida sometime tonight in the early hours of tomorrow morning. Its projected path is just off the east coast of Florida at the moment. Wind speeds on the coast are likely to reach close to 90 miles an hour, but in Orlando, more likely to reach 20 to 30 miles an hour. Rainfall is projected to be between 2 and 4 inches in South Florida and on the coast. In Orlando, we're more likely to get between 1 and 2 inches of rain. Moving on to theme park news and the Disney Park availability calendar is showing full availability for both theme park ticket guests and Disney Resort guests through August. There's just one blip for Disney Resort guests in September, which is for Saturday the 6th and Hollywood Studios is now unavailable. Remember that September the 7th is Labor Day and a public holiday in the US. For annual pass holders in August, there are already a number of days that are completely unavailable. For those that are available, only Epcot is open for annual pass holders up to the 19th of August. After that date, all parks are available except for Hollywood Studios. For APs in September, Hollywood Studios isn't available on any of those days marked yellow. All the other parks are. Into October and Hollywood Studios isn't available on the 3rd and the 10th. Everything else is good for October. No good news for Universal Orlando, I'm afraid. Comcast, Universal Orlando's parent company, released its second quarter earnings results on Thursday and reported that revenue was down 94% in the quarter. Universal Orlando's parks have been reopened for nearly two months, but capacity restrictions within the park and larger fears about travel during the COVID-19 pandemic have kept crowds low. Jeff Shell, CEO of NBC Universal, said on Thursday, while attendance in both locations is much lower than our typical summer levels, we are still doing better financially than if we were closed. 
and even more importantly our guest satisfaction scores are at record levels. Yesterday at Universal Orlando another round of layoffs was announced. It's not known how many jobs have been lost. In light of Universal's revenue drop it looks like they have decided to save money by closing some attractions. Those to be suspended are A Day in the Park with Barney, Fear Factor, Fast and Furious Supercharged, Kang and Kodos Twist and Hurl, Poseidon's Fury and Storm Force Accelatron. Both A Day in the Park with Barney and Fear Factor have been suspended since the parks reopened, with Fear Factor being used as a U-Rest zone currently. So I guess the big news from the past couple of days is Universal Studios, Universal Orlando, um, the results 94% down on revenue in the second quarter, laying off more jobs and they did lay off some people when they, when they reopened and then six attractions being suspended, albeit two of those were already suspended and one of them may never come back in fear factor. So um, what does that all mean? Should we be panicking for Universal Orlando? And, and I don't think we should. They did state that it's better for them to be open. They are making money um, and they're making more money or they're not losing money as if they would be closed. So I can't see Universal Orlando closing anytime in the near future or at all actually. And there were, you know, there were rumours that Disney should close and other places should close. It's, I don't think it's going to happen. Now that I believe we've got over the peak, I do believe that. Um, just on the stats that we're getting, I can only go from stats, I'm not a medical professional. But I don't think we're going to see any further peaks. That means that hopefully as cases get lower or immunity is built up or whatever happens, we get a vaccine that would be enormous, enormously helpful. But as we get lower and lower cases, I can see that the, um, the restrictions will be lifted slightly on capacity and that will help fill the parks a little bit further. Now, they're not reaching capacity yet and that's because people are afraid, afraid to travel. I guess even annual pass holders aren't filling Universal Studios and Islands of Adventure and Volcano Bay because even they don't want to go in there. Um, and that's true of uh, Disney as well. They're not filled to capacity either. They haven't actually closed their doors at all since they reopened on any park. So there is this issue of people are afraid to come down here or people who live here are afraid to go to the parks. People who live further afield, there aren't too many of them coming either. Um, my flights to New York this week, and I'm going to have a video of that fairly soon. So my flights to New York were only less than a quarter full going up and about a third full coming back down. Very few kids on those planes, all seems to be business people. Um, so people who have to fly are flying, people who don't have to fly really aren't flying. But um, I think the Universal Orlando scenario is good going forward. I think we're going to see better third quarter figures because we have to. Um, I don't know what their share price is like now. I must have a look at that and see what's, what's happened to that on the back of these, these results. I know that um, Six Flags, I've been keeping an eye on Six Flags and SeaWorld. Their, pri their share prices have been going down, but they're not at the bottom where they were maybe a month ago. So, you know, I think the people who trade shares are looking at those positively. Um, and they, they are usually people in the know, um, I am not. But I think things are looking better than they have done and I think that Universal and, uh, or, and uh, Disney and SeaWorld will keep their doors open and I think things will get better. Okay, that's my take on what's going on right now. That's it for today. I'll see you back here on Monday. Until then, have a great weekend. Take care. See you then. Bye-bye.